Well, hello and welcome back. It's time for another review and ranking of a Disney classic, Cinderella. Now, this is a hard one for me from the very beginning because it's such a beloved movie by me and many other people. So, I tried to be extra cynical on it because I want to be fair. But it is hard to take those rose-colored glasses off for this movie. The nostalgia struggle is real. So, did I learn to hate this movie? Well, find out after this. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for more free content regarding media criticism. You won't want to miss Alice in Wonderland and Sleeping Beauty coming up. Also, share this video on your own social media platforms and start conversations about media with your friends. Opening credits roll and the storybook opens to exposition. And gave his beloved child every luxury and comfort. First of all, only bad dads give their child everything that they want. Secondly, she wanted you to marry that woman. Oh, that clock. Killjoy. I hear you. Come on, get up, you say. Time to start another day. That happiness is clearly a facade for her frustration. Cinderella rescues, feeds, and clothes mice. No wonder her stepmother hates her. I wouldn't be too kind to someone who feeds and clothes mice in my house either. No, I mean it. Lucifer has his good points too. There must be something good about him. Cinderella is a little passive aggressive. The mice have holes in the house that take them literally to every room in this mansion, but they only have one hole that takes them outside Really? Really? These moments with the mice were once very funny to me as a child, but as an adult they are an unnecessary and plot hole inducing side quest. Objectively, I really wish that Gus Gus would just get eaten. It would streamline this movie a whole lot. Serves you right, you dummy. Stepsisters are introduced through the use of shrill bells and shrill human voices. Before I even see their adult faces, I already think they are the human equivalent of rat feces. Cinderella is blamed for a prank that she didn't even commit and has to do 10 years hard labor. Or at least that's how long it would take me to finish all the chores that she has to do. Clean it. The king needs grandchildren. Yesterday. So he plans for a ball for tonight. Because that's clearly the most practical way to get the entire kingdom there, right? In my experience, the best way to get an entire kingdom to come to a ball is to plan it within just a couple of hours. Cinderella receives an invitation to the ball and, like an idiot, shows it to her stepmother and stepsisters. Well, why not? After all, I'm still a member of the family. I love how Cinderella has some spunk, sarcasm, and wit. She is fun and has a couple of flaws that really do ground her. She feels much more like a real person than, especially, Snow White does. The animals decide to make a dress for Cinderella and risk life and limb so their friend will be happy. And when Cinderella comes into the room, we get a great payoff. Later, as she comes down that grand staircase in her dress, it feels like the climax to a movie, and we are so happy for... What? No, stop! Stop it! Cinderella makes us all have sympathy for her. She has come to her breaking point, and it is at this point that her miracle comes. And through that miracle, she goes to the ball. We see the king, who still has only one character trait. The Grand Duke and the king spot Cinderella, and Cinderella dances with the prince for what I hope is more than the three minutes that they show. The bell strikes midnight, and Cinderella runs away. She loses her slipper, but is allowed to keep one to remember the night by. The next day, Cinderella hears that the prince is searching for the girl that left her slipper, and she has her Lizzie moment. <laughs> you, 
You mean to tell me I could be married to that palace? Interestingly enough, my ex-mother-in-law gave me that look right before I took her daughter to Disney World. Oh, the horrors. Killjoy. Cinderella is locked inside another badly installed door. Seriously, Disney, what is up with your contractors? The Grand Duke arrives. The mice go on a massive quest to get the key out of the pocket, up the stairs, and past Lucifer, and the tension builds quite nicely throughout this scene. I mean, you know what's gonna happen, but it's all in the journey. The birds get in on the act in a moment that's actually a pretty good setup and payoff. In the end, the slipper fits Cinderella's tiny, pretty people feet, rather than the stepsister's huge, ugly people feet. And she lives happily ever after. At least, until the sequels. As far as the storyline goes, well, just look at that time. The first princess movie could be summed up in literally eight sentences. This movie is much more complex than that, although the side plot with the king is unnecessary. The mice, while they do distract from Cinderella's overall character development, still add a great deal to the story. They both act as active agents in the plot and help build tension for a few key points. This is great storytelling. I give Cinderella first place for storyline. I just can't shake how masterful this storytelling is. It keeps you interested through the constant building and releasing of tension. I never regret watching it. Cinderella. I love music. I do music for a living. So I was surprised that I liked how short the songs are in this film. I think I can hear the possibility that these songs could get real grating if they were longer, and so I'm happy that these songs quit while I still want more. I love me. Most of the music actually comes from the score, and this score really helps set the mood and build tension. This music is both creative and fun. It informs the audience and entertains them. I can't ask for music to do much more than that, except maybe develop characters, but we'll get to that later. I cannot give this music anything less than first place over Pinocchio. This animation is pretty beautiful. Its foreground characters are realistic, and the background is understated so that both fit together. And they do, masterfully. It's beautiful, it's romantic, and it's just a little bit off kilter. And can I just say that I love Mary Blair? Cinderella gets third place for animation. Cinderella. The wicked stepmother is a raging narcissist who uses her children to make herself feel good. When good things happen to Cinderella, the narcissistic mother and I, I mean, stepmother, is passive aggressive and gets her golden children to destroy Cinderella's dress. And I never go back on my all while keeping a sly and cool demeanor, making it look like she has done nothing wrong. So when Cinderella understandably breaks down and says that she can't believe, but then her miracle begins, I want to yell. No, I'm not ready yet. I want to wallow in my anger and frustration just a little bit more. I want to hate my mother and, I mean, stepmother. But here's the thing with anger and bitterness. When you want to be angry with someone because they took something or someone away from you, when you want to be angry because someone thought they could use you to accomplish whatever their own ends were. You are letting them hold you down. And Cinderella is a great dissection of this. Cinderella does not let other people hold her down. She doesn't let her circumstances define who she is. She holds what I assume is a great deal of loyalty to her father, which is why she won't leave. But she accepts her own decision to stay with her father's family 
dutifully. She makes what I'm assuming would be a very difficult decision, and she takes responsibility for it. And she allows herself to be used, because she knows this is the only way she can continue to love her father, at least as she has seemingly defined it. She has struggled for years to continue loving someone who not only doesn't love her, but actively continues to take steps to take away the things she once enjoyed. Even as Cinderella tries to continue to love her family, her family members take away all agency from her. And they know how they can push her, because they know she has a desire to honor her father, or you can insert whatever your reason is here, and she doesn't want to leave. But she chooses to live happily, and once she finds another purpose to live for, in this case, a, a big house, she decides to move forward with her life rather than staying tied to bonds that were cut by her family years ago. So I give these characters third place out of 12. Cinderella. Surprisingly, it seems as though the technology used in these Silver Age films is smaller than, say, the Golden Age. I don't know if Disney, having come off a few flops, was afraid to not make money or what it would have been, but it seems as though they kept this first film beautiful but uncomplicated and inexpensive. And that's probably a good thing ultimately. The Disney company had some pretty big debt being called back to pay off, and the wartime shorts movies were just barely keeping the company alive. So Cinderella reversed those fortunes in a big way. They did use a couple of other technologies though. The biggest of these was rotoscoping, which employed the use of film footage. You'd actually film live people and then you would use that as the inspiration for your animation. There of course still was some multiplane use and uh, other technologies that would just be needed for making a movie. For technology, I give Cinderella 6th place. Cinderella. I knew I loved this movie, and despite taking off the nostalgia goggles, I discovered that I love this movie even more. It's fun, it's funny, it's emotional, and it builds a great deal of tension throughout its scenes. I always was wanting to know what was going to happen next, and that's a great thing for a story to do. The mice are a little fillery, but they also contribute to the plot. Well, the male ones do anyway. However, I can't stand the king. I just want to bash his bald head in and tell him to get a life besides trying to control his son. Ultimately, I'm not sure that it's a good idea for Cinderella to marry this Prince Charming, but it is a good idea for her to move on with her life. And that is the story that I really enjoy watching unfold. Cinderella receives second place for its overall ranking. So what do you think? Do you identify with Cinderella? Leave notes of your experiences in the comments below. Subscribe and hit that bell for further notifications. Also follow me on Facebook at the link down in the doobly-doo and follow me on Twitter at NotYourNormalG1, which is a way cooler name than I would ever give myself, and I definitely don't deserve it. Thanks for joining, and I'll talk to you again next week on Tuesday at 4 o'clock.